night at 6, it's being called the tale of two town halls. Last night, President Trump was on the defense while Joe Biden tried to clarify his position on key voter issues. We have the details. 99 Kent State students end their quarantines today, while hundreds more are still under order. We have case counts and all you need to know about the virus outbreak on campus. And as the coronavirus continues to surge across the country, we'll give you the latest on the COVID-19 numbers in Portage County and the rest of the state. Amidst the pandemic, one local homeowner is making the most out of this Halloween season. This spooky exclusive only on TV2 News. This is TV2 News. Happy Friday, Kent State and all of Portage County. Thank you for joining us one last time before the weekend. I'm Gianna Dupre. And I'm Daniel Snyder. Town Hall recaps, updates on the quarantine situation from campus and Ohio surge in COVID-19 cases. This is all top of the hour and we begin in Miami and Philadelphia tonight where sites of simultaneous town halls were taking place yesterday evening in a Trump-Biden face-off. President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden faced off in dueling town halls scheduled after Trump refused to participate in a virtual debate following his coronavirus diagnosis. A topic he tried to avoid, like when asked whether he was tested the day of the first debate. You know, if you ask the doctor, they'll give you a perfect answer, yeah. but they take a test and I leave and I go about so my you, business. did you take a test on the day of the debate, I guess uh, is the bottom line. I probably line. did, and I took a test the day before and the day before. Meanwhile, in Philadelphia, Biden slammed Trump's handling of the pandemic. So he missed enormous opportunities and kept saying things that weren't true. It's all going to go away like a miracle. He's still saying those things. The Democratic nominee also criticized Trump's messaging as harmful to the coronavirus response. The words of a president matter. Absolutely. No matter whether they're good, bad, or indifferent, they matter. For most of the night, Trump was combative, including when pressed on his refusal to condemn white supremacy in the first debate. I denounced white supremacy, okay? You did I two denounced days later. white supremacy for years, but you always do it. You always start off with a well, question. You didn't ask Joe Biden whether or not he denounces Antifa. Biden mostly provided long answers, laying out his policy plan. The former VP dodged a question about whether he's looking to expand the Supreme Court in the wake of Senate Republicans' move to rush the confirmation of Judge Amy Coney Barrett. But don't voters have a right to know where you they stand? They do have a right to know where they stand, and they'll have a right to know where I stand before they vote. So you'll come out with a clear position before Election Day? Yes, depending on how they handle this. Trump did little to deny the New York Times reporting about his tax returns. Are you confirming that, yes, you do owe some $400 million? What I'm saying is that it's a tiny percentage of my net worth. When you look at vast properties like I have, and they're big and they're beautiful and they're well located, when you look at that, the amount of money, $400 million, is a peanut. When asked what a Biden loss would mean for the country, the former vice president said this. Well, it could say that I'm a lousy candidate and I didn't do a good job. It doesn't say that we are as racially, ethnically, and religiously at odds with one another as it appears. And the aftermath of the Trump-Biden town halls right here in Kent, Vivian Hawk joins us now with more on how KSU students are reacting. Good evening, Viv Vivian. Yes, Dan, with just three weeks until the election and after last night's town halls, Kent State students have formed their own opinions on the presidential race. Take a look. Last night, both President Trump and Vice President Biden went head to head on separate and simultaneous town halls with President Trump on NBC and Vice President Biden on ABC. I didn't come away with any new conclusions than I already drew for myself. Kent State students have their own thoughts about this new socially distanced format, which replaced the traditional town hall format in which both presidential candidates appear in the same room answering the questions of the same voters. I think that's still how they should be doing it, or at least at different times, so people can watch both of them and be educated on both sides. For voters who were on the fence, I thought that there should have been distinct time set up so that they could you know, consider both candidates and what they had to say. Putting them both at the same time made that a lot tougher. 
Most Kent State students agree that many voters have already made up their minds, so the town halls likely didn't have an impact on the outcome of the election. At this point, I feel like people are voting for who they're voting for. Like, most yeah. people aren't undecided at this point. I don't know, but most of the people I know, like, know who they're voting for, and they're sticking with that. Uh, some voters may be swayed. I think the mass majority of people already knew who they were voting for, regardless of the debates or town hall. The next presidential debate is slated to take place next Thursday, October 22nd. In the Franklin Hall studio, I'm Vivian Hawk. Thanks, Vivian. Records are being shattered as more mail-in ballots get counted in this presidential election. Right now, there are over 17 million people who have voted in the U.S. These votes are mostly driven by Democrat voters with a 2 to 1 ratio, where Republicans are more desired to vote in person on November 3rd. Officials say it's projected for this 2020 election to have the biggest voter turnout this country has seen since 1908. Last night at midnight, two dorms were taken off quarantine list and put back to a normal status compared to the six dorms that were remaining under quarantine. Centennial Court E and Coons Hall were done last night as there are still four dorms still waiting until October 20th to be done. One dorm on the 19th and another on the 21st. 57 students have had their quarantines lifted and 110 more will follow on the 20th. The Kent State COVID dashboard says as of the week of October 4th, there has been 54 new cases on campus and 219 since July. TV2 will keep you updated as these quarantines get lifted and added. And to add to that, this week we learned Portage County is still a red level county. The Ohio Department of Health making it a high incident area. This means for every 100,000 residents, Portage County has 100 positive COVID-19 cases. We also learned today that the state has reported another daily case total of over 2,000 cases. This is after just yesterday's record high case count of 2,178. And the curfew which bans alcohol sales in bars after 10 p.m. remains in effect after a bill to repeal the curfew was denied. Governor Mike DeWine explained in a press briefing, resuming the curfew is in the best interests for the health of the people. And as more than 80% of bars and restaurants are expected to close or end the fiscal year below or breaking even, Governor Mike DeWine assured business owners that he is working relentlessly with legislators to provide a stimulus to keep their doors open. And good evening everyone. I am Kyle Miller here with your TV2 News weather report. Now currently in Kent, it does feel a little bit chillier than 58 degrees, I think. Um, I'm feeling pretty bitterly cold walking around campus outside. I think everyone else is too, but 58 degrees is the temp right now. It is nice and sunny. Just a couple clouds up in the sky that frankly look quite beautiful if you ask me. Light wind west-northwest at 6 miles an hour, some low humidity, and pretty good visibility for the day. Now tonight, we will have a freeze warning that goes into effect at midnight that will last up until 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. The temperatures are supposed to get as low as 33 to 32 degrees. So as we see with the freeze warning, as I said, in effect at, uh, from midnight to 9, temps to drop low. Widespread frost will come through the night and stay up until tomorrow morning. But tomorrow morning will be nice and sunny so that frost won't last too long. Now don't forget, make sure all your pipes are insulated so we don't have any bursting pipes. Make sure your furry friends are nice and warm as they go outside to use the bathroom. And also make sure that you are nice and warm as you go outside to do whatever you need to. Get into the weekend on Saturday, 58 degrees. Nice and sunny. I think it's going to be a beautiful day tomorrow, but Sunday, a little bit, a chance of rain. Pretty cloudy all day and 61 degrees for the high. Going into Monday, some light showers. Um, not 6 p.m., Monday, excuse me, uh, but 57 degrees. Uh, some mild rain at times. Could be scattered showers, but it shouldn't last too long. And that is all I have for now. Stay tuned to get a look into next week's forecast. And coming up is a COVID-19 vaccine right around the corner. Pharmaceutical company Pfizer applies for an emergency distribution of their trial coronavirus vaccine. The details ahead. 
college enrollment has taken a large hit this year as the pandemic shifts classes to online and students are just not wanting to go. We have more when we return. Three months ago, there weren't enough masks. We were desperately sourcing from all over the world. People were making face coverings from scarves, bandanas, and bits of fabric. Now there are plenty of masks, but some people don't want to wear them. Come on. Mask up, America. Roll over. Can't high five. All right. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother and... I am totally a hot person. Right, guys? Thanks for being honest. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Adopt pure love at theshelterpetproject.org. This week, 21 states in the U.S. have hit their highest seven-day average of new COVID-19 cases since this pandemic has begun. That's just one of the signs that this virus will pose a significant threat through the end of the year and on to 2021. John Lorenk reports. Health officials have repeatedly warned the U.S. about a second wave of COVID-19 as the country enters cold and flu season. Data from the past few days suggest those fears are well founded. Fall weather usually brings colder temperatures and that means more people are doing indoor activities, which is very high risk when it comes to virus transmission. At least 35 states have seen a rise in new cases this week over last. Only three have seen them fall. We've got to get we've got to get these numbers down. Uh, and if this trend continues, our hospital capacity will be in jeopardy. More than 63,000 new cases were announced Thursday, a high not reached since August. I think for the short term, we have to hunker down. An influential model from the University of Washington School of Medicine predicts about 171,000 more COVID-19 related deaths in the U.S. by February 1st, if behaviors don't change. Dr. Anthony Fauci, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, says shutting down the country is off the table, but urges five measures to curb infections. Wearing masks, physical distancing, avoiding crowds, washing hands, and opting for outdoor settings. We have to get through this season. Next season's going to be much better. Next year is going to be much better. Let's get through this, and let's get through it safe. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Am I worried? Yes, I'm very worried. There are some simple measures. Systematic, generalized mask wearing together with a strict control on social gatherings could save in this region about 281,000 lives in six months. Now, COVID-19 cases are surging across Europe, spanning and surpassing even the United States as numbers increase dramatically. Spain, France, the UK, the Netherlands, and Russia together recorded more than 70,000 new cases on October 13th, more than 40% higher than the 49,000 cases reported in the United States. The population of these five countries total around 343 million, while the population of the United States sits at 331 million. Now, U.S. pharmaceutical company Pfizer says it's expected to apply for public use of its coronavirus vaccine candidate in the third week of November, if everything goes according to plan. The emergency use authorization will be requested through the FDA, meaning a vaccine likely won't be available by Election Day on November 3rd. The company's CEO says the timeline is Pfizer's best estimates and could change. The vaccine candidate is one of four in late stage clinical trials currently in the U.S. Welcome back, everybody. Now getting a look at Northeast Ohio, we're all sitting pretty up in the upper 50s, even Mansfield sitting down at 60. But that 58 degree sunny weather, I'm liking it for now. As we zoom out statewide, it's kind of that same story with the exception of Athens at 47 degrees. Poor Bobcats down there. I'm glad I'm up here. 
56 in Dayton, 59 in Lima, and 50 in Cincinnati. Taking a look at the Ohio radar, not much for us to worry about. Mostly clear around the Ohio Valley right now, but when you look up towards Chicago, there is a little bit of a rain system, and that is what is going to make its way toward northeast Ohio for some possible scattered showers tomorrow. Taking a look at the seven-day forecast now, as I said, 59 and very nice tomorrow. A couple days of rain, Sunday and Monday. A little bit more rain is expected to come on Monday. Going into the rest of the week, unfortunately, it doesn't get much better. Cloudy all day Tuesday, scattered showers lasting the majority of the day on Wednesday. Back to cloudy on Thursday, but you see next Friday a uh, chance of some strong thunderstorms. You know, I do love thunderstorms, and uh, I I'll miss them once it comes to winter, but I'll take this last one for now. But sitting in the 50s and 60s all week, and that's all I've got for you this week. Hope you all have a great weekend. Stay warm and stay Fortage County. I'm Kyle Miller. Gian Thanks, Kyle. Universities have been hit hard this past year, and it is not looking like it's getting better. Freshman enrollment into schools has dropped more than 16% from last year. And with a month into this year's fall semester, undergraduate enrollment has dropped 4% across American universities. That falls in line with Kent State, where students' enrollment has dropped 4% from last year, with over 18,000 students enrolled. Now, Kent State's own speech and debate team had their very first competition this weekend. Now, despite the challenging circumstances, the team had a very successful season thus far. Online format for the tournaments and, and half of our practices has been difficult, but at the same time, it's enabled us to compete with schools we've never been able to compete to before because of a lack of fun. Of the five team members who competed at this year's debate, three of them placed. And the members of the team say their accomplishments are so much more impressive because they run the teams themselves. We, you know, swept first through third out of 16 competitors um, at this most recent tournament uh, this past Sunday. And so I'm very proud of everybody on the team. We're one of the few student-run debate teams that we've encountered. The debate team will compete again next weekend. For more information, be sure to check out their Instagram at Kent underscore debate. And after a chilling break, one chilling charitable cause is taking over the local area. We'll visit the Halloween attraction and have that inside look for you. Streetsboro High School right around the corner. We've got a weekend of high school football action prepared for you. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my Perfect. heart was, was good? full. Good. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's got to come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day and keeps me company when I'm doing schoolwork. I like it when he jumps up on the table too. He is a veggie thief. He's an incredible companion and my best friend. Can't say that I've met anybody that doesn't love him too. When I adopted Turtle, I discovered all the things that make him unique. He's a little bit of a lot of things, but mostly he's all pure love. Welcome back. Today we are going to talk about the top trending stories. Twitter didn't make a peep or tweet for a few hours on Thursday, but at least for some users. The social media platform experienced a partial outage starting around 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Thousands of users reported being unable to access its websites and mobile apps. A spokesperson says the issue was caused by an inadvertent change we made to our internal systems. Paying for Zoom? Maybe. This week, Zoom announced a new option for people who want to hold virtual events and charge them for it. It's called OnZoom. The video chat platform says with it, users can grow businesses and reach new audiences. Each OnZoom live stream can have up to 1,000 attendees. If public, your event will be able to set up a directory for people to search. And you can even sell tickets for them. For now, the company is not taking a cut of the admission price. And for fans who want the newest iPhone, good news. You can now pre-order them on Apple's website starting today. The iPhone 12 is thinner, smaller, and lighter than the iPhone 11. 
It also has two cameras on the back and is now equipped with 5G, what tech companies call the next generation high speed wireless network. The phone comes in five colors and costs around $800. It's expected to be available in stores next Friday. And today, the Commerce Department reporting a nearly 2% increase in U.S. retail sales for the month of September, more than twice the expected rate. With consumers shopping both online and in person, sales were up for clothing, sporting goods, and furniture. And it's an encouraging trend because many store closures and an 8% national average unemployment rate, analysts speculate people are shopping more because they are spending less on services. And now, your TV2 Sports Report. Good evening, Portage County. I'm Christian Hinton, and this is your TV2 Sports Report. Today we're talking championship series in the MLB, Browns-Steelers game updates, and what are the odds? But we're going to start off by moving over to Ben, who is covering the Streetsboro game tonight. Ben, how's it going over there? Thanks, Christian. You know, it's really, really cold out. I'm in my warm parka, but it feels like high school football season, and it's second round of the playoffs tonight. I am at Streetsboro High School where the Rockets are getting ready to take on Niles McKinley. And this Rockets team is really dangerous. They're undefeated this season. They're 6-0, and and Niles McKinley is 5-2. and Last week they defeated Ravenna. But that is not all we have tonight because the OHSAA playoffs are going to be sticking with TV2 Sports, and we're going to have coverage for you all weekend long. Streetsboro versus McKinley tonight. Clover League takes on West Holmes tonight as well. Tomorrow, Garfield versus Mooney, and then Chardon versus Howland is also tonight. Chardon is another undefeated team. Some great matchups. So, Christian, I got a question for you. What else do we have in sports? Thanks, Ben. The Browns and Steelers face off Sunday in a crucial divisional matchup. And, and as always, for storylines, this game has been very active this week. On the Steelers' side, inactives include wide receiver Deontay Johnson as well as offensive guard David DeCastro, both players crucial to the Steelers' early 4-0 undefeated success. And the Browns have no shortage of storylines either, as the biggest story coming from, the Berea, uh, coming from Berea this week stemmed from Odell Beckham Jr.'s illness during Thursday's practice. Beckham was sent, early, uh, sent home early due to an illness. While, it was coach, while Coach Stefanski called it, uh, out of abundance of caution, Beckham thankfully did not test positive for COVID-19 today. He still needs another positive test tomorrow to be able to rejoin the facility in Berea, but all indications show that Odell will be ready to go for Sunday's huge game. And moving over to the NLCS, the Dodgers and Braves face off tonight with Atlanta stunning a 3-1 series lead. Last night's game was won big by the Braves uh, as they put up 10 runs on a route to a 10-2 win. For as big of a series lead the Braves have, the runs have not been scarce, with each team scoring a combined 45 runs in only four games. If the Braves go on to win tonight, uh, the series would be their first World Series appearance since losing to the Yankees in 1999. And we've got a live update here of the Tampa Bay's Houston Astros. It's the bottom of the first. Rays have a 3-2 series lead. It's still 0-0, but if the Rays win today, that will send them to the World Series, uh, which they will either face the Dodgers or the Braves, whoever wins that series. And we've also got what are the odds today as well. Um, so let's move on over to that. So starting off obviously with the Browns and the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Steelers are favored to win this game by three and a half points. But in my heart, I'm a Browns fan. I've got them winning uh, by a lot. Uh, and the Braves are favored to win the World Series right now. As you can see, the Rays are second most, the Dodgers, and then the Astros, or the Asterix, as I like to call them. And a big matchup in college football, number three Georgia faces off against number two Alabama. Alabama, four and a half point favorite to win that game. Uh, that's all I have for sports. For all the updates on this week's important high school football matchups and much more, stay up to date with us on Twitter at TV2KSU Sports. I'm Christian Hinton. And if Halloween is your favorite season, get ready for one homeowner with their spooky haunted house at Strawberry Hill. And when, and when we return, you and your playful pup may share more things in common than you think. The new findings by researchers after the break. Stick with us.
If you love them enough to drive an hour to cheer them on as they get beat 11 to nothing in the rain, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat. Today, I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. It's really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. Welcome back. With Halloween right around the corner, TV2's Helena Sepulveda decided to visit on a local attraction that's gaining some traction. Yes, she joins us now with more. Helena? Hi guys. This Rootstown residence began setting up for their Halloween decorating in August, and the first showing of this year is tonight. The season debut of The Haunt on Strawberry Hill is tonight for its fourth year in a row. Residents of this Rootstown home have finally finished putting up their Halloween display, but they're also using their decorations to help give back to their community. This is um, kind of my passion, is to help uh, local families. I, we help the Center of Hope by collecting canned goods, and we trade uh, cans for candy. So on Halloween night, people come out and I'll give them a bag of candy and they'll give us canned goods. But you can drop off canned goods anytime you like. The display features over a dozen life-size skeletons and other creatures, most of which turn on and even speak to viewers as they drive past. I actually started this when my daughter was in kindergarten, which would be 15 years ago. She asked me to build a, a few tombstones so her friends could see it. I did that and now it's blossomed into this because she's turning 20 this year. The best part about this year's Halloween show is the 12 foot skeleton behind me that was purchased at Home Depot. The skeleton's eyes light up and it even moves when it's turned on. I bought mine in August, but uh, it's the hottest uh, Halloween item of the year. Cohen hopes that the community will enjoy this year's scene and he hopes to beat last year's donation record of 600 pounds of food for the Center of Hope. People love to give back. You just got to give them the opportunity and the right meaning and something that they care about. It's usually a local cause. The display will be on until 8 o'clock on weekdays and 9 on the weekends. So get in the car and take a drive over, but don't forget your canned goods. Reporting in Franklin Hall for TV2, I'm Haley Sepulveda. Thanks, Haley. Now, if, you're, if you sometimes feel like your dog's personality is changing, you might be right. A new study published in Scientific Reports found that dogs' personalities change as they age. They become less active, less curious, much like humans. Results showed that attentiveness and problem solving improved until the age of six, then stabilized. Excitement and enjoyment for new situations declined after the age of three, but the desire to socialize remained the same over time. Truly a man's best friend. And for all you ramen noodle enthusiasts out there, Nison, the maker of Top Ramen, is looking for a chief noodle officer. Yes, you get paid $10,000 to develop and test out new ramen noodle soup recipes. Plus, if you get any, plus, you get a 50-year supply of Top Ramen products. Wow. <laughs> Post a picture and a recipe of your own Top Ramen creation to their social media for the chance to be selected. Use the hashtag, how do you Top Ramen? To, and you have to act fast because submissions are only being accepted through October 30th. And that'll do it for this evening's edition of TV2 News. As always, thank you for being with us tonight. For continuous coverage, be sure to co connect with us on all social media platforms at TV2KSU. I'm Daniel Snyder. And I'm Gianna Dupre. Have a great weekend. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. <laughs>